Hey everybody, uh, today we're gonna talk about bonding. Um, and I found this cute little picture of a family and family bonding. There's all sorts of definitions for the term bonding, but of course, in uh, this video, we are going to focus specifically on chemical bonding. Um, we're zooming out a little bit. Last video, we talked about uh, the structure of atoms and of the elements. And we're going to start to look at some of the patterns that we see in biology and start to put some of these patterns together in order to investigate uh, the bigger picture, which, of course, is life, because biology is life. Uh, so let's get started. Last video, we looked at the periodic table for biologists, and I want to point out a couple of things that you might remember. Hopefully, um, you are doing some review between the last video and this one, um, and that is that the numbers at the top of the periodic table, they're typically Roman numerals, um, but that tells me how many valence electrons that I have, and that's an important term. Uh, valence electrons, of course, are the outermost electrons and those are the ones that we're interested in so we want to pay attention to this and looking at our periodic table to kind of figure out how certain atoms are going to bond with other atoms in order to form molecules and compounds and so the thing to really keep in mind um, is that all bondings bonds happen because of electrons um, for the purposes of this course the electrons and the, you know, the needs of in each individual atom is going to determine the ways that atoms get together. And when atoms get together, they are called uh, molecules. And that's what we're really interested in getting to in biology and talking about biochemistry. So a bonding, just as a quick note, bonding happens because of electrons. Now, electrons, um, you know, of course, the, you've got the proton and the neutrons that are in the nucleus of the atom, um, and then the electrons are in the orbitals or on the outside of that nucleus. And electrons, uh, bonding is electrons either being transferred from one atom to another or shared depending on a bunch of chemistry that we're not gonna talk about during this class, but it is important to understand that uh, bonding happens because of electrons. So electrons can either be transferred or shared, depending on the needs of the atom and some other chemistry. So they could be a, a transferred or shared. Now, just like toys and your siblings, um, those electrons can be shared equally or unequally. And that's really what we're going to be focusing on. So with electrons are shared, they can be shared equally, which means that those electrons orbit around each atom in the bond the e same amount of time or unequally. And that is going to sort of give us um, some information about what kinds of bonds that we see. Now, you'll remember, me remember that electrons have a negative charge. And so when the electrons are transferred versus when they're shared, it might change the charge of the atom and therefore change its behavior just a little bit. So this is pretty conceptual. So rather than talking about it some more, we're going to look at a few examples. Paying attention um, to the number of valence electrons on the elements that we're gonna discuss um, and kind of how that number will influence the behavior in the way that those atoms get with other atoms to form compounds. So the first thing that we're going to look at, the first two that we're going to look at um, are pretty common. Um, and that is sodium, which is Na, and chlorine, which is Cl. And when you put those together, they form a compound called salt. Um, and the formula for NaCl, is table salt. So that is the kind of salt that you put on your food, but a salt is a chemical compound and there's all sorts of different kinds of salts. We're just gonna focus on this one. So we go back over to our periodic table and you see that sodium is in this first group, which means it has one valence electron. And you look over here at chlorine and it's in this group, which means it has seven valence electrons. So really quick recap, 
do you remember how many valence electrons that atoms want to have? If you remembered eight, the answer is correct. Now, that being said, I'm already going to break that rule because it's not just that atoms want to have eight valence electrons, it's that they want their outermost shell to be full. So for example, in the case of sodium, it has one valence electron, and if it gets rid of that valence electron, then the next closest shell will be the full shell. I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. So uh, sodium has 11 total electrons. And we're just going to use this as a quick and dirty uh, guy. So here's sodium. And I'm just going to draw that and my one electron on the outside. Made that like a weird shape. We'll just undo that and redo it. How about that? Okay. Um, chlorine, on the other example, or on on the other hand, has seven valence electrons. So we're going to draw those. See if I can do a better circle. Ooh, that was a really good circle. Did you see that? Um, try not to pay too much attention to the size. I'm doing this all freehand. So we're going to draw... Um, these electrons on we've got one two three four five six and seven right so sodium has one valence electron chlorine chlorine has seven valence electrons right so the easiest thing for sodium to do is going to be to get rid of that electron. And it just so happens that good friend chlorine is right there ready to take it. So in this kind of bonding, you're actually going to see this electron transfer from one atom to another. Now sodium has lost an electron. Um, and since electrons have a negative charge, and when I transfer that electron, I'm now going to write sodium as a positively charged atom, which is also called an ion. And an ion is just an atom that has either taken electrons and become more negative or gotten rid of electrons and become more positive. And it's pretty confusing, so if you need to rewatch the video, not a problem. Um, now, I've got sodium, my sodium ion here. And, but now chlorine has taken an extra electron, which is going to make it more negative. So when we draw our chlorine molecule, we're gonna put a little negative sign at the top of that. And that's actually called chloride for chemistry rules. Don't worry too much about the naming, um, but you now you see um, that sodium is positively charged because it's given up an electron and chloride is negatively charged because it's taken on that electron. And what do we know about opposites? If they attract the positive and the negative in the universe are attracted to one another. Um, and this, kind, this is a kind of bond where electrons are transferred and that is called an ionic bond. So an ionic bond are when electrons are transferred. Electrons are transferred. I don't know if like transferred has one R or two, but for some reason this two R's are looking incorrect to me. So um, we'll have to look at that a little bit later. So this is called an ionic bond and this is one kind of bonding where electrons are transferred from one atom to another. And this example um, is uh, sodium chloride, also called table salt. And the way that we write it now is just draw it, writing them together in a Cl. This is our example of the first kind of bonding that we're gonna look at, which is ionic bonding. The second kind of bonding is going to have to do with sharing of electrons. And so we're looking here, we're focusing um, mainly on our elements, of course, you remember 
are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. So we're going to be really focusing on those, and you're going to hear this multiple times over the course of this class, but also um, in IB biology. We're going to talk about these elements all of the time, so you'll be very well versed in this by the time it's all said and done. Um, so let's look in, uh, at an example of elements that are going to share their electrons. And we will look at two very important ones that are pretty close together, and that are carbon and oxygen. So carbon and oxygen, uh, if we look up here back at our periodic table, um, carbon has four valence electrons, and oxygen has six valence electrons, which means oxygen wants two valence electrons, two more electrons, and then carbon needs four more electrons for them to both have a full valence. So let's look and see how that's going to work. All right, so let's draw my carbon atom. It's my nice circle. So there's my carbon atom and I have four valence electrons. Okay, now because it wants eight, carbon can typically go one of two ways. It can get rid of four or take on four, um, but the reality is it tends to uh, take on um, share, right? So it's not gonna take electrons from other things. It's gonna share electrons with other elements in order to fill that octet pool. Um, let's see, so we've got oxygen here and oxygen here. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, and oxygen has six. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now I'm drawing them this way because I'm just illustrating a point. Um, when you get into chemistry and when you get in, if you end up taking um, DP chemistry, then the reasons and the whys and all of the diagramming and all of those sorts of things, all of that rules, and you'll get lots of practice um, using what they call Bohr models. For the purposes of biology, this is a very simplified version, um, and we'll get plenty of practice in doing this and predicting the kinds of behaviors. So try not to get too focused on these details, um, you know, just kind of paying attention to the overall pattern. So I've got four valence electrons on carbon. I have six on each of my oxygen atoms. And what happens is that these atoms can share their electrons. So I'm going to share these two between oxygen and carbon and these two between the same two atoms. Right, so now sometimes these electrons will be spending time around oxygen and sometimes they're gonna be spending time around carbon. It's the same sort of thing and that's what a bond is. So in between these two atoms, you're gonna see electrons spending time orbiting, right, around both of their nuclei. And I think the better way to do it would be showing it like that. Right, so these electrons are now spending equal time, and that's what a bond is. They're sharing those electrons. And you know, electrons that are on the outermost shell or the valence are the ones that are being shared or transferred. So when atoms share electrons, it's called covalent covalent because they are sharing their valence electrons. This, um, now you can see if you look at the element formula, you've got a pretty good idea of what molecule this is. And that is, of course, carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is a covalent bond. Now, carbon and oxygen share their electrons equally between one another. Carbon and oxygen share their electrons equally between 
one another. They're super close together on the periodic table. They've got similar um, uh, attractiveness to the electrons. And so they're going to share these equally. And when you're shared equally, here's another way to draw or represent that because I'm showing that I've got two pair or two pair of electrons shared between uh, those two elements and two between those two elements. So that's how you would draw carbon dioxide without all of the dots and circles and everything. Um, and this is called a covalent bond. Now it's called covalent and shared equally. So this is an example of a non-polar covalent bond. And just like on a magnet where you've got um, poles or opposite sides of a magnet, or if you look at the earth, which is the North pole and the South pole, which means they're opposite ends of a molecule. Um, this is nonpolar because these electrons are shared equally between these elements, right? So the charge is evenly distributed between these two and between these two because the electrons are spending the same amount of time around each one of those elements. So this is an example of a non-polar covalent bond, okay? The last example that we are gonna look at, we're gonna go back up here, and this is a pretty common substance as well, but it's, a, it's kind of a different, uh, it's a slightly different kind of bond. And we're gonna look at the bond that takes place between oxygen over here and hydrogen over here. So hydrogen has one valence electron and oxygen has, as we just saw, six valence electrons. So I'm gonna draw my hydrogen atom. It's a little better. And my oxygen atom. Well, can I jump the gun there? Oxygen atom. Uh, hydrogen has one valence electron, oxygen has six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so they can share this pair, but the oxygen is not happy um, just quite yet. That means I'm gonna get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons and because hydrogen remember that big word ubiquitous that i used in the last video um hydrogen has hydrogens everywhere so when you have oxygen interacting with hydrogen typically that happens in pairs and you will get another hydrogen atom that will share its electron with oxygen as well of course this chemical formula is H2O, and that is water. Now here is an interesting thing about water and a slightly different type of um, covalent bond, right? So covalent, they're sharing the electrons, but oxygen is way more hungry for electrons than hydrogen, right? Hydrogen has one electron, it could just give it up or take on another one, it's really super indifferent. Oxygen needs two to have a full valence. So electrons tend to spend more time around oxygen than they do hydrogen. So we start to get, I'm gonna draw this molecule a little bit better. So here's my oxygen atom. and my now bonded hydrogens. And I'm drawing it like this. You'll see this a bunch when we start to, you know, reasons of bond angles and whatever. Um, but we start to see that I've got those lines represent pairs of electrons. So I see that because oxygen wants electrons a lot more than hydrogen, that the electrons that hydrogen is sharing with oxygen spend more time around the oxygen. Um, and that looks like this. So I have these electrons, they'll spend most of their time around oxygen and then some time around the hydrogen. And then some time around the hydrogen. 
And the same thing over here, I spend a little bit of time around that hydrogen and the majority of the time around oxygen. Right? Now, electrons have a negative charge. So if I've got a molecule that is sharing electrons unequally, right? I'm spending more time over here than I am over here. What happens is that it creates a pull. And because electrons are negative, it creates a partial negative charge on this end of the molecule and a partial positive charge on each end of the hydrogen or each end of the molecules where the hydrogens are. So now I've created this difference in charge between each end of this molecule, just like um, North Pole versus South Pole. But in this case, because I'm talking about positive and negative charges, and my electrons are spending a lot more time around the oxygen, then this end is gonna be a little bit negative. And these ends each are going to be a little bit positive. And just like we saw similarly in our ionic bonding, opposites attract. So if I have a bunch of water molecules together in a glass of water, for example, then those, all of those polar molecules are going to be interacting with each other and it's gonna give water some very unique properties, which we will cover in the next video. So just quickly to oh, the last thing that I want to tell you is that bond, of course, is called a polar covalent bond. So those are our three kinds of bonds that we see. We've got an ionic bond, a nonpolar covalent bond, and a polar covalent bond. And those are really the three examples and for what we need for biology. So those are our three kinds of bonds. I've already put this vocabulary on Quizlet. So please, please, please practice and get comfortable with looking at the different kinds of behaviors that you'll see in an ionic bond versus a polar uh, covalent bond versus a nonpolar covalent bond. And don't worry because in class or online, wherever you are, uh, we are going to be practicing with these properties a lot. And it's gonna get pretty, uh, pretty, pretty cool when we start to play with substances that are polar and nonpolar. Um, as always, if you have any questions, shoot me an email and always remember you're awesome, science is awesome, and I will see you next time.